This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub, and I'm chatting with Bryce Zabel, author of the alternate history novel Surrounded by Enemies, which explores what if Kennedy had which explores what if Kennedy had survived his assassination. And while people theorize about this all the time, Bryce takes a different turn and shows the president's legacy might not have been as incorruptible as we thought. This is my first ever interview, so on this channel. So forgive me if I'm rusty on this, but um. Before I go any further, I must warn the audience that we are going to be discussing spoilers, because, you know, you can't. But even by spoiling it, you should check out the book anyway, because it is incredible. So, um, Bryce, you're a producer, director, writer. Uh, you've produced a show called Dark Skies, around on NBC, and have movies like um, Atlantis, The Lost Empire under your belt. Uh, what got you interested in alternate history? Well, I come from a family where... Uh, I, my father was a history teacher, and so we always talked about history around the, the, the table uh, at night at dinner, and, and, and also history is just in my, in my blood. I enjoy writing about it, and uh, I also enjoy thinking about those great what-ifs, and uh, I've always thought that the Kennedy what-if was, was a really nuanced one, and no one really seemed to be quite tackling it in the way that I thought would be the, the more substantial way which would be to ask yourself what really would have happened if not just that Kennedy survived into a second term, but that he was shot at in Dallas, but he survived that. Uh, what would have happened on November 23rd going forward? And, and that's really been the thing that's unlocked the book for me and uh, why I think people really enjoy the reading of it. Yeah, and I, I find that so fascinating about your book because every, whenever anybody talks about if Kennedy had survived, they, and I'm one of these people, just kind of assume the assassination never happened. But what you do is you, you turn it into this thing where he knows he was shot at, and he knows that there's people trying to kill him, and it, it plays with his mind and his brother, and they, they know they're, you know, surrounded by enemies. That's the, the thing. So, <laughs> you know, Cody, I mean, if you think about it, if John Kennedy had been shot at in Dallas and then they missed, he would have woken up on November 23rd, 1963, and he would have realized that somebody uh, tried to shoot him in broad daylight on a public street, you know, in an act of political assassination and murder. And, and I don't think he would have taken that lightly, and I don't think his attorney general brother, Robert Kennedy, would have taken it lightly. Oh, and, definitely not. Uh, and, and, and let's face it, Jack Kennedy and the Kennedys in general did have enemies. Uh, so, so the the somebody tried to kill him, uh, and and they had many enemies. And in fact, what the what the Kennedys would have been asking themselves is, who among this list uh, was was behind this? Because they would have had a lot of suspects, as as everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 yet, what I found really interesting about surrounded by enemies was that it allowed me to tell some of these things that we've discussed over the last, uh, say, 50 years about the assassination, about President Kennedy's uh, personal life and, and, and so forth, and to tell them in a present tense, gripping, suspenseful kind of thriller where Jack and Bobby Kennedy are really the leading characters in it. Mm -hmm. And I think you touched on it uh, earlier. Let's face it, John Kennedy was, even at the height of his popularity uh, and the presidency, was always living one headline away from disaster. He knew it, his brother knew it, people in, in, uh, in the United States Congress knew it, J. Edgar Hoover certainly knew it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so uh, I just thought it would be better than putting the rose... There's two things that happen with Kennedy what-ifs. Either people put on rose-colored glasses and they start to say, well, it would have been so wonderful, we wouldn't have gone into Vietnam, and blah, 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 you know, all the things that, that could have turned out great mm -hmm. uh, that didn't turn out great in the 60s. Um, or they talk about, uh, they, make, they turn it into a time travel story where some fellow goes back in time to try to save the president. I wasn't interested in either of those because I, I think that territory has been somewhat discussed, um, you know, in culture and in literature. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of swung for the fences on this one. And I know that uh, much of what I have in the book is, is controversial, but I will say that I don't think there's anything in the book that isn't backed up by extremely strong suspicion by some very competent people. Yeah, exactly, and and the part that's so controversial is that it, it doesn't sort of just mention the conspiracy a little bit. It takes it head-on, and it really sort of fleshes out 
the conspiracy that we've all sort of wondered about for 50 years and it, it kind of has an ugly face and we and there's characters that who we suspect are a part of the conspiracy and they actually turn out to be it and it's like i mean that part that one uh when johnson admitted that he was at least a part of it that just kind of blew my mind because it was like <laughs> you've definitely verged into the spoiler territory but oh exactly i mean this war- i warned them i warned them they know <laughs> that's the, that very thing is the kind of uh, thing that was being discussed at the time i mean uh certainly let's remember a couple of facts bobby kennedy actually thought that his brother was killed uh, by a conspiracy i mean and bobby kennedy was in a position to know secondly Uh, As of just a couple of years ago, on the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy assassination, 62% of the American people continue to believe to this day that uh, John Kennedy was killed as a consequence of a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's really not such a stretch to at least have the Kennedys think that uh, they were probably being... Uh, hunted by conspirators and uh, and survived that one uh, one event. But think about it: if you woke up uh, woke up on November twenty third and you realized you'd survived a intended public execution on uh, yeah, at high noon, mm-hmm. I think that you would probably increase your security to make sure it didn't happen again. And so, for me, that's what kind of unleashes a lot of the uh, driving force of surrounded by enemies, which is the Kennedys managed to protect the president physically. Uh, post assassination, but that doesn't mean that there aren't people out there who did conspire to have him killed, who would not be happy with the outcome that Kennedy was alive in the White House and running for re-election. So that's sort of the delicious part of the story. And and you know, as you know, having read it, what I've tried to do is tell the story in a very journalistic uh, style, although oh. it is technically a novel. It really reads more like a, a journalist's uh, recounting of the Kennedy administration. Yeah, uh, that never was. Yeah, going off that, I had to. I was so invested in the book at times, I had to remind myself that Kennedy actually did die because it read so much like um, a, a history book. Not, not, not maybe not like a, an exact history book, but um, it, it's sort of like how you would. It's read like nonfiction. Well, you know, that is the intended effect, and I thank you for saying that. Uh, uh, what your, uh, you know, what the listeners may, may want to take into account is what, what it does is it, rather than a history book, it's sort of looking back 50 years to the Kennedy administration through the prism of a national magazine, uh, which I call Top Story, but you can think of it more as Newsweek or Time magazine, mm-hmm. which is looking back on the Kennedy administration in a special issue. Uh, and, and so it is. Uh, it's that kind of clipped, terse storytelling that these these big news magazines use. And I found it was the perfect vehicle because you're not the only person who has said what you just said where they sort of felt like it, 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 it felt real enough to them that they were not sure which parts of it were real and which parts had to be fabricated. Mm-hmm. And so that's what made it so, like, strange because there, were, there was stuff you found out about Kennedy that you know, you would assume we're a part of an alternate history scenario, but no, it was, it was actually fact. And it's, it's weird that most, a lot of people still don't really know about Kennedy's escapades. Like they, they do a little bit. They know he was, you know, kind of a, a horny guy, <laughs> lack of better words, but they don't under, they don't know the effect of that. And that's what I love about this book is that it really comes back, you know, and bites him in the ass. Well, you know, and also, um, I tried to do everything that I did with some historical precedent. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, for example, the fact that, that Kennedy would be targeted uh, by a journalistic investigation uh, is not at all outrageous, let's face it. Uh, less than a decade or a decade later, Nixon was targeted by a journalistic investigation while he was in the White House, uh-huh. uh, and, and Watergate came about. I mean, Kennedy had enough skeletons in the closet, and by the way, also had an audio tape uh, system in his own Oval Office, as did Nixon. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's just a lot of comparisons to that. So, yeah. I didn't put uh, John Kennedy in any hot water that he and his brother did not already think that they were very close to. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of Nixon, 
every like a lot of people don't really know that it was Kennedy that started the thing with bugging his his office, and Nixon was the one who got caught by that. But it's definitely if if Kennedy was not shot, I'm sure that would have you know came back at him. The fact well, that he was delicious irony, isn't it? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, but 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 equally possible, and, and in fact, one of the things that I did, and I I won't totally give it away because I want people to sort of be surprised, I suppose, when they hit this moment. But uh-huh. uh, what to do with the tapes when you've been found with when you have tapes that you recorded, and the Supreme Court says to you that those are evidence. Uh, Nixon uh, tried every which way to get out of it. Uh, he wiggled and he waffled and he redacted and and ultimately had to turn them over, and they turned into his un to to they. They undid his presidency, if you will. Yeah. Well, John Kennedy, uh, in my book, uh, takes the takes another way, shall we say, as we say out in Hollywood, <laughs> we're going in another direction with this. So I went in a totally different direction, but a very plausible one, because you know people we have idealized John Kennedy very much, but and, and he was very admirable in so many ways, and and there's valid reasons why so many of us continue to love his, him and his legacy. But he mm-hmm. wasn't infallible, and he wasn't perfect. And he was also a tough guy, and uh, I've allowed him to act um, out of his toughness. Um, and, and in fact, the other person I've allowed to really be a tough guy is Bobby Kennedy, and, and Bobby was. I mean, he he would have fought back, uh, and and that is exactly what happens in this book. He and his brother um, actually become uh, even closer than they ever were before, mm-hmm. and and rather than you know fighting. Cold War battles and the Cubans and things like that, which they had to continue to do. Yeah. They also turned some of their intellectual firepower against the forces of conspiracy uh, that were out there in the land at that time. Um, you, you mentioned Bobby, and it's interesting in this book is that he doesn't get shot. That because his brother doesn't die, and b- because you know he continues on the presidential campaign, he doesn't himself get assassinated, which I thought was very interesting. Well, you know, it's it's. I think that the mistake in a lot of alternate history uh, books, and I, I, I'm not an expert, but but mm-hmm. I have written one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think an easy mistake to make is to say that things sort of ping back after you do your little break point in history that. Things tend to want to ping back, but in reality, things tend to want to uh, split apart. Butterfly and, effect, and, and in a way. People, yeah, because people are acting on information that they, they actually had. So, mm-hmm. for example, um, uh, Bobby Kennedy, had his brother survived, would have gone through uh, uh, the political crisis, not just, not just the uh, crisis of confidence that he went through when his brother was dead, but if his brother was alive, he would have gone through with his brother a political uh, challenge, uh, the likes of which they hadn't experienced before. And it might very well be that um, that Bobby would have said, I've had enough of this, because the, America would have been a very different country uh, for the Kennedys in particular, if John Kennedy had gotten out of Al- Dallas alive, uh, certain things would have happened, and and you have to take into effect, uh, into account rather, what what effect they may have had on a Bobby Kennedy or a, or an Edward Kennedy or or a John Kennedy. Oh, it, because that single moment sort of just transformed the entire history of the Kennedy family. It changed his relationship with his wife. It changed their perception in the, you know, in the the national community. Um, Because the fact that Kennedy didn't die, it definitely did butterfly affect the whole family's reputation. Well, it it would have, if you think about it. um, One one thing that seems very clear in our timeline, in the the, our world's timeline, is Mm -hmm. that what happened to John Kennedy uh, is that he he became martyred by, and, and, the world and Americans in particular uh, put him on a pedestal that that he never quite was on when he was alive. He was very popular mm-hmm. uh, by, to a huge number of people in the country, and, and you know uh, certainly was a very popular politician. But at the same time, he had a very high degree of hatred aimed at him. Mm-hmm. In many respects, it's not unlike uh, 
where we are right now with Barack Obama. There are many people that really, really love Barack Obama, and there are many people that really, really hate him, mm -hmm. as was the case with George W. Bush, mm -hmm. uh, where he had his supporters and defenders. Kennedy was very much in that, in that mold, and we tend to have forgotten that. We also tend to have forgotten uh, the risky behavior that, uh, that he was living with, and, mm -hmm. and certain things got uh, packed up and boxed up and, and forgotten about uh, because of his death. Uh, Jackie Kennedy never had a decision to make about what she thought about her marriage because he died. Mm -hmm. uh, but if he hadn't died, then the marriage between John and Jacqueline Kennedy uh, would certainly have been on the front burner. And the two of them would have had to decide what to do about it. So for my purposes, uh, and again, I'm not infallible, but but I think the, uh, the the job of the alternate historian, if you will, is to just take a swing for the fences and to be very specific. And I think that's probably why the book reads like, like nonfiction, mm -hmm. is that it, its level of specificity about what was going on uh, is very high. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think I think when you're trying to make people, uh, you know, believe the, the fantastic, which is an alternate history, mm -hmm. uh, you need to try to give them something very, very grounded so that they can feel comfortable as they read it. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's what I see a, a very big problem in with a lot of um, alternate history scenarios, either professional or um amateur, which a lot of professional alternate history scenarios, they, they kind of bend the facts, you know, to make it more fantastical, which is fine. It, it, it plays out well. But a lot of amateur ones, they, they sort of, they do what you mentioned. They don't butterfly effect out. They sort of think that there's a little difference in the timeline, and then it sort of just juts back to where the natural order should be. And yeah, so um, that's what well, I love. You know, on the other hand, Corey, I, I, I would say, Cody. Go. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to start that over. Uh, on okay. the other hand, Cody, one of the things about it is that sometimes history would ping back. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, but you have to use your discretion about that. Uh, like yeah, I, and I it's, it, it's, it's the realistic why way. Doesn't, uh, you know, should they have a nuclear war happen? I'm like, no, it's not that much of a butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to talk about the political uh, situation that would have existed in the United States in a Kennedy second term, mm -hmm. uh, and it wouldn't have been all sweetness and light. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, some of the same people who were alive during our timeline would be alive in the alternate timeline, mm -hmm. and certain things were were on rails to happen anyway, like the, the moon landing. Um, Richard Nixon hadn't gone anywhere. Ronald Reagan was, uh, you know, gaining popularity in California. Yeah. Certain things, politically, you just have to say, this may be tweaked a little bit, but it's still moving forward in a, in a recognizable direction. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to think. There was one sort of detail that, oh, it was civil rights. Civil rights, we had the, sort of the same similar idea of what would happen with civil rights, and that was because Johnson was able to use Kennedy's martyrdom as sort of a way to have leverage on Congress to get civil rights passed. And since Kennedy doesn't die in, in either of our scenarios, there isn't that leverage. And so they kind of have to push off the Civil Rights Act until after the election because Kennedy didn't want to use that uh, he didn't want to, you know, get that threat to his campaign. Absolutely, Cody. I think you're, you know, there are three things that you have to sort of track if you're going to do a Kennedy stays alive. One is civil rights. Another is Vietnam, and uh, you know, really, another is is sort of the the Cold War the slash Moon program. And and I think particularly with the civil rights one, uh, you are absolutely right. Lyndon Johnson knew that the martyrdom of Kennedy allowed him to uh, go after civil rights. And in fact, he was talking to Congress about it within five days of Kennedy's death, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. and, and, and so he clearly knew he had to move. And, and you are so right. John Kennedy, had he survived uh, and, and gone into a second term, it, it was tough for Johnson to get it through. And it was only because of the martyrdom of Kennedy. I think certain historical trends, as you pointed out, 
would obviously continue in the world of civil rights, and ultimately the civil rights legislation that we, we have today on the books would still have been accomplished, but it might not have been accomplished in 1964. It, it certainly might have taken an extra three, four, five, six, seven years, depending on uh, other circumstances. And as for Vietnam, Kennedy was no fan of Vietnam, and I know people have gone back and forth over the years about what he would have done about Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I tried to, here's an example of where using my He Survives Dallas uh, 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 breakpoint really allows me to do some interesting storytelling. Uh, the decision about whether to stay in Vietnam or not, or get in in the first place, is not made in a vacuum. If John Kennedy had actually survived in Dallas and uh, then gone back to a Washington, D.C. that was inflamed by investigations and, and uh, all kinds of political intrigue and, and a, you know, going to terms with the conspiracy, mm -hmm. then, then I, I would think that, that, that Kennedy himself would have uh, thought about Vietnam differently. Uh, if he thought that he was in trouble politically, he may have acted sooner. I mean, in other words, things, actions have consequences. Uh -huh. Things don't exist in a vacuum. And when you're trying to write an alternate history and be successful at it, you, you just don't always stay on the... You may get to some place, but you try to find a path that's intriguing and interesting that gets you there in a slightly different way. Yeah, and, and that's what's interesting about, about the differences between me and your scenario. And it's not about our interpretation of what Kennedy would have done. It's the fact that in my scenario, the attack just doesn't happen, and in yours it does. And both have radically different consequences on how he would have acted on Vietnam. And so that's what I find so fascinating is that maybe he would have done something completely different if his mindset was changed from that. And that's what I, you know, I, I love so I, much about the book. I agree. Uh, and, and, and interestingly enough, if the attack hadn't happened, um, I is, is an interesting phrase because the more I've read about the, the, the Kennedy years, and I've you know fallen in the rabbit hole on this one, I've read so much, um, and I've been so consistently interested in it for oh. all these years. Uh -huh. So to say if he if the attack hadn't happened in Dallas to me, I sort of go to a different place. I go, well, then it would have happened at some other place or some other time because John yeah. Kennedy was clearly on a collision course uh, in in this in the historical timeline, whether it happened in Dallas or not. I mean, there were attempts. Uh, it, there's evidence of attempts, two other attempts prior to Dallas. Hmm. Uh, so I, I think what's really interesting is that Kennedy would still have been targeted by dark forces, mm -hmm. whether whether Dallas had happened or not. And I so I tend to think that history would have swung in that darker direction simply because you can't have a a, a, a violent conflict between a president and uh, various power groups mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, about in the world and in the United States, his country, and not have uh, an impact by that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's all an interesting thing. Certainly alternate history is just a way for people like us to, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, have fun discussing all these what ifs. Yeah. And, and, and there, are, there are obviously 10,000 different what ifs. Uh, obviously people who read Surrounded by Enemies, many of them might have their own opinion. And I respect that. I guess what I hope uh, I've accomplished with Surrounded by Enemies is even people who think, well, you know, I might, I, I, I'm not sure if I see it that way, but they'll still totally enjoy the ride. And I think, I hope for the majority of people who read it, that they will feel like I've made choices that are appropriate and that they they have gotten on the train with me and taken the, the journey because uh, I've certainly enjoyed telling it so much. I just, I want to give that pleasure back to the people who read it. Yeah, and, and you can definitely tell that um, the way that you've decided this alternate scenario is based on facts. It is, it's not just wild swinging, but it, it, it's based on some historical evidence. Um, I, there's another, another thing that uh, you mentioned earlier about um, civil rights and the deaths and stuff. And I had, a, I had a question. I was reading your book, and you still had MLK die, which I believe would have, would have happened too. But he died in an entirely different place. He died in Chicago in 1967 instead of in our timeline in 1968. And I wanted to know, uh, why, why did you uh, d decide to make that change? Well, it's such a small change in the book, and I, I mean, I appreciate that you 
that it hit you with that that force in the total amount of the book it's like just it's a throwaway almost yeah it's, but what 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 I did with that um, uh, Cody was to try to say even in in, in there there may be arcs of history uh, Martin Luther King's um, arc toward assassination but once you change something as big as JFK gets killed or he doesn't get killed in Dallas, Texas, then certain things start moving in slightly different ways. And I just wanted to sort of capture that feeling by saying that, yes, Martin Luther King was still going to get dead in this scenario, mm -hmm. but not necessarily in the same way, uh, because obviously life would have changed in a post-Dallas environment. Mm -hmm. And um, if... I, re I remember you also mentioned, sort of alluded to Cassius Clay. You, you had them seeing his fights, and they sort of related themselves to Cassius Clay, who would become Muhammad Ali. I wanted to know, why did you decide to include Muhammad Ali in this? Uh, well, first of all, he's a, if you talk about world-class icons, Muhammad Ali may be one of the very few people who's a bigger icon than JFK. Oh, of course. Uh, but the part of the reason I did it is, is to the to the point of what it takes to write an alternate history. You have to find things that are likely to go on anyway and sort of hang your hat on them to build the timeline. Mm -hmm. And whether or not John Kennedy uh, was uh, killed on November 22nd, 1963, certain things would have still happened. The Beatles still would have come to America in February in, uh, two in 1964. Mm -hmm. uh, Cassius Clay would have still fought Sonny Liston and defeated him, mm -hmm. and he would have returned to fight him again as Muhammad Ali. Those things you're not really going to change uh, in the timeline, and they allowed me to sort of enrich the story because because you do know those happen. Um, it isn't like I'm surprising anyone by adding those storylines, but what it allowed me to do is to see characters like Bobby Kennedy and John Kennedy reacting to those fights in a very unusual way. In other words, uh, Bobby Kennedy uses the very fact that the fight is uh, a national obsession uh, to his advantage in trying to press the uh, the law enforcement case. And, you know, without saying any more, that's just kind of an interesting way to uh, to put it in there so that everybody can relate to it. Yeah, um, that that's what I I in good alternate history you have to do that. You have to sort of think that this will will change this will not and that and that's the good thing about uh and that's what i try to do when i write you know i'm not writing a novel i'm writing like 10 minute videos but you you kind of have to analyze the situation and see which one you of bet. that will be yeah uh, well, and, and, and cody you know the, let's use the muhammad ali uh uh, example for a moment. The, the fact that John Kennedy did not get killed in Dallas, Texas, would not have suddenly made Sonny Liston more impressive in the ring against Cassius Clay. Exactly. I mean, Cassius Clay was still going to win that fight uh, no matter what happened. I mm -hmm. mean, you'd have to have a, a nuclear bomb dropped on Washington, D.C. to probably have the kind of impact where the fight got postponed and, and uh, you know, they didn't fight. Mm -hmm. But for just, for just life going on, I mean, you know, remember after 9-11, we continued to play baseball games. And uh, mm -hmm. and even after JFK's uh, uh, death in our timeline, uh, they had a football game on the, that Sunday that um, that they were broadcasting. Yeah. Um, speaking of the nation and interacting with the events that happened to Kennedy, uh, let's talk about the Oswald trial, because yes. that, that sort of stuck to me the most that instead of him just dying, he was actually going to be given a fair trial and stuff, and he was sent to court. And, and so how what gave you the decision of having him go to trial instead of just getting shot? Well, I just felt like, uh, to me, that is a very directly related thing. I mean, John Kennedy died, then we know Oswald got killed two days later. John mm -hmm. Kennedy doesn't die. Who knows? I mean, certain small things could have changed. The way people were approaching it could have changed. And a small enough thing happens uh, that Oswald is able to uh, get through that Sunday without being murdered by Jack Ruby. Uh, but, but history does kind of ping back on Oswald in this book. But what I thought would be the most interesting, obviously, is, you know, as a novelist, you're always looking, you're looking for great characters and you're looking for 
good drama. Yeah. And by killing Oswald in the same time frame, uh, I, I would have deprived myself of the ability to turn him into a character with some personality and to also, um, you know, invoke the idea that, w that, that had Oswald been put on trial or even threatened to be put on trial, it would have created a lot of anxiety among everybody, including the Kennedy brothers, including the conspirators, mm -hmm. and there would have, Oswald would have become uh, not so much a patsy as a pawn uh, in between these large groups. And so that's why I did it. I did it because I thought that it made sense. I thought that it was a defensible decision that I could actually employ and, and have some... It, 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 listen, uh, listen, I'm a TV uh, writer by, by trade, and one of the things that you have to do in TV is you have to always have a lot of but-then moments where you, you think it's going one way and then there's a surprise. And, and I, I wanted to write this book with the same sense of surprise uh, in it that I try to bring to my television scripts. Um, mm -hmm. and so I didn't give myself a pass by writing a novel that I could uh, you know, go to a lower level of drama. I, I, I kept the stakes really high, as high as I could keep the stakes for as long as I could keep them, because I thought that would just be... Let's face it, I, I'm not doing this... Uh, I didn't write this book to make some point about JFK. I, I, I wrote this book to entertain people and give them something to to spend a few hours reading that would really uh, uh, turn their minds on and they'd enjoy reading. And so for that reason, Oswald lived. Hmm. Um, speaking of Johnson, I accidentally spoiled that that one thing, but uh, you, you very much have his relationship with Kennedy be antagonistic, which is which was very true to the, the actual history of it, but it sort of devolves even more into becoming he sort of has this villainous role near the end of the book um what what's your personal opinion of johnson well let's 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 put the light on lyndon johnson i mean it's it's fashionable right now with brian cranston playing him in a tv movie and all that to mm -hmm. sort of say well look at look at the things johnson accomplished mm -hmm. well he did as president but i I didn't get the luxury of living in that world where Johnson was president because that's not my story. Mm -hmm. I lived in the world, in my story, where Lyndon Johnson was was this close to getting his himself thrown out of office, mm -hmm. uh, either impeached or indicted for crimes that he had committed back in Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, look, Johnson was no... Uh, you know, was no hero at that time. The mm -hmm. Kennedys didn't like him, and and they were probably very happy that he was uh, on his way out uh, through indictment. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, I went back to: Can I use Johnson's uh, uh, relationship with the Kennedys and and extrapolate that that antagonistic relationship, that that very difficult relationship they had? Can I extrapolate that into a environment in, in 1964, particularly into 65, where Johnson uh, is st was still in his current office, the vice presidency, or in danger of losing it, and Kennedy was still president? So that it, it really just gave more moves in the story, and I think it's consistent. I mean, Johnson, the biggest break of Johnson's life was Kennedy's death. Mm -hmm. and he knew it. Uh, so, and, and, and I think that there are lots of people who, you know, if you do a Google search right now or go to Amazon, you can find several, multiple books alleging Johnson's involvement. Uh, I think the, 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 if you will, the jury is out on that a, a little bit in that I, I don't think there's a smoking gun of proof, but clearly the guy had, had some issues. And again, I, I felt like uh, I would just uh, wrap him up in a bow and deliver him to my readers. Yeah, and I, I liked how he was uh, created, how you made his character, because it was, it was very much Johnson, but it was also a very antagonistic Johnson that we could realistically see, because he, he was so close to it, and that probably really tore at him that he would have been within, you know, one bullet of be having his entire, you know, life goal achieved. Uh, it, absolutely, I think about it. Again, Johnson got to be president of the United States and got to be a heroic and noble figure. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, he came very, very close to being a disgraced, indicted vice president. Mm -hmm. And uh, so 
you know, it's it's the luck of the draw sometimes uh, for how these things go down. And then you have to ask yourself, uh, which many people in many books have, when you think about Lyndon Johnson and you think about the JFK assassination, uh, the people who have tried to solve the JFK assassination have always asked themselves, well, who benefits? And there are many people who benefit. I think they even say it in Oliver Stone's movie, who benefits? Many people who benefited from JFK's death, mm -hmm. uh, although you'd have to put Lyndon Johnson up at the top of the list. Yeah, and speaking of people who benefited from it, there is JFK even joked in the book. He said, well, who doesn't want to kill us or doesn't want to see us dead? And I, I laughed at that. Because, and there was just, there was a list. There were so many people. And you, you listed it out in the book of, of the people who... <laughs> would benefit from seeing him dead. What did they gain? And there were a lot of people. And that it's kind of opened my mind that um, it, it just made Oswald as a person seem so much less significant in the grand scheme of this whole whole thing. And, yes. and about a Kennedy assassination book, it very rarely focuses on John, on Oswald as a person. It's more of Oswald as a symbol of what's going right. on. And I, I like I like that because he's so insignificant in the entire politics and conflict with Kennedy and whoever the conspirators actually are. And, and, and yet think about it. Because he's alive enough to stand trial, he he is he's sort of less significant when you realize the vast forces of violence uh, that were alive in the country at that time. So that may, does make him insignificant. However, the fact that he's alive and could stand trial and cut deals and uh, talk about how he came to even be arrested makes him probably the most dangerous man in America for a few months, mm -hmm. which is fascinating. I, I loved the polarity of that. He, the guy shouldn't be that important, but he's extremely dangerous to all sides. Oh, me too. Fascinating. Me too. And there was that jurisdiction battle that they, they wanted to see who would bring this guy to justice and I like that they, that was very realistic the play between the state and the government and who would benefit from bringing him down well in fact by the way I loved writing that because I thought I, I really spent some time and said well you know what were the issues what did politicians believe well let's face it the Republicans because of the South and all that had been playing the states rights issues mm -hmm. so they were in favor of states rights so oddly Texas's desire to put Oswald in trial on trial in Texas and the federal government's desire to get him the hell out of Texas mm -hmm. so they could put him on trial uh, really became a political issue in the 1964 election. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and that's the other thing that, that is very interesting is, you know, yes, on November 21st, uh, 1963, it is very clear that John Kennedy was probably going to run against Barry Goldwater and probably roll him up pretty easily, mm -hmm. all right? Yeah. But uh, there was still a year to go. And if that year had instead been John Kennedy is the you know uh, survived an attack in Dallas, but there are multiple investigations going on about it, and Oswald's going on trial, and that stuff is happening during an election where the Republicans are able to uh, you know argue literally about states' rights and and some you know ancillary issues to that. Mm -hmm. You might have gotten yourself an election. Yeah, and and speaking of states' rights, it was instead of Kennedy dying. It was Connolly. Connolly was shot. So Texas did have in the book a, a case because there, he did assassinate, or he, you know, allegedly assassinated yes. Connolly. And so, what was the? I, I'm prob I probably know the answer to this, but why did you have Connolly die instead of Kennedy? Was that more of just to create the uh, tragedy? That happened. Well, I mean, answer one is I had Connolly die instead of Kennedy because the book is called, you know, what if Kennedy survived Dallas? So Kennedy had to survive. Oh, I know. I meant, I meant so like instead of, Connelly yeah. Did. And the answer to that is, I felt that uh, it was important to show people that the stakes were still life and death. Um, I, I wanted Kennedy to get out of Dallas only by a, a margin, mm -hmm. uh, and and so that so that. I wanted to see, listen, John Kennedy died in Dallas, Texas on November 22nd, 1963. But I wondered how John Kennedy would have responded to it if he'd not died.
I wonder oh, I know. what would he have thought about that? Would he have been angry? Would he have been scared? Would he have been uh, uh, ready for revenge? What, what yeah. would John Kennedy and Bobby Kennedy be thinking? That's what fueled my entire thing, and so that's yeah. why Connolly died, so that they had there, there was just more stakes in the whole thing. Oh, okay. I think I, I think I phrased that question a bit too wrong. I was mostly, I was mostly wondering about Conley, but yeah, I, I understand. Um, but uh, yeah, speaking of Conley, it was not just Conley and the the thing that died. It was also his uh, the bodyguard. The, and I'm assuming this was the bodyguard that jumped on top of the car in our timeline. Yes, Clint Hill. Um you know, was famous for having, he was, first of all, he was in Jackie Kennedy's detail, mm-hmm. and he's fam- he was supposed to be watching Jackie that day. He's famous for climbing up on the back of the, the car yeah. as Mrs. Kennedy was trying to scramble out to get basically her husband's brains at the time. Yeah. So uh, Clint Hill was in proximity, and, uh, and I, you know, the idea is to have things only change by a slight margin mm-hmm. and then watch the arrow of history fly off in another direction. The, the thing that seemed uh, appropriate to me was to have Clint Hill, uh, who always was upset that he hadn't prevented the, the assassination, have him act a second earlier than he did and see what happened. And I like how, um, as Kennedy's allegations kind of come out, um, how, Clint, how what Clint Hill like sacrificing his life, it sort of becomes a bit of a controversy. Like, would other people have given their life if they knew what Kennedy had done? Because that's sort of the moral, you know, a little bit of a moral conflict between Kennedy and the um, sure. security. I mean, it is, except for one issue, which is that the Secret Service is supposed to be able to lay their, law, their lives down for the president oh exactly and that's why i love so much that they had this more they like the, the service isn't supposed to think of you know think by themselves of should we save the president or not but sure. because of what kennedy's kind of like doing they have this distaste of him and so they well, what you're referring to that your your listeners you know can uh lock into is the idea that Kennedy was kind of controversial with his Secret Service because he did treat them like the guys sometimes, but at the other times he he had this risky behavior, primarily risky sexual behavior, where mm-hmm. they were part of his own cover-up. And I think that many of them resented it. I mean, it's very clear reading about it. There have been a few books about the Secret Service where it's all, you know, the, the, the glowing... Uh, history but then there's been enough where the secret service agents have said that they they were not happy being used by kennedy the way he used them yeah and and that was good how you how you turned that into a sort of another dramatic standpoint um talk i'm think the one thing i'm also thinking about is how sort of insignificant vietnam became because Kennedy, since Kennedy didn't die, he didn't decide to get involved, but then you just kind of had it fizzle out. and that it, it sort of fizzles out. I mean, to a certain extent, I was afraid a little bit of becoming prisoner of Vietnam, mm-hmm. that, that, that it, would, it could take over a, a book, and I didn't, I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't say that it fizzles out. Uh, it may fizzle out in the book. <laughs> I suppose, but it it didn't really, in in terms of Kennedy's response, I think Kennedy has an appropriate response to it in this. He never wanted to get in, uh, but he was under a lot of pressure, but the pressure he was on was from people whose opinion he didn't trust. Johnson may have trusted the Joint Chiefs. Kennedy certainly did not. Mm -hmm. And um, as the stakes rise for him in other arenas, political and otherwise, uh, he begins to see Vietnam in a context and, and... in, in a way, I think, takes a rather heroic stand toward it because uh, it's, it's politically controversial not to go in, mm-hmm. uh, and, and yet he sort of stands down some of the people over it, um, but not necessarily, and here's what I love about Surrounded by Enemies, Kennedy stands down some of the people who want him to get in Vietnam, but not entirely because he disagrees about getting into Vietnam, but partly as the as the game of chess that's being played in Washington, D.C. Uh, and, and he just refuses to go down with their ship. Mm-hmm. And 
Yeah, I didn't mean to use the word fizzle. It definitely didn't fizzle out in the actual scenario. Um, but in comparison to how the actual war would have been, it sort of, it's in, a, in my mind a bit of a tragedy that the war happened the way it is in our timeline instead of, you know, in this alternate timeline you know, it's, where it's just... You know, uh, Cody, one of the interesting things I do is I have, I've collected Time and Newsweek over the years, and I have a complete collection of Time and Newsweek from the 1960s, oh. which has been fascinating. I use that on my NBC series, Dark Skies, hmm. and it was very useful. But one of the things that it allowed me to do, for example, is to literally week by week study the, the drifting into Vietnam that, uh, that happened almost immediately after Kennedy's death. And there were things that were happening... Uh, in 1963 and 1964 that were happening on Lyndon Johnson's watch that, again, wouldn't have been prevented by Kennedy's survival, right? They would mm -hmm. still have happened in Vietnam. There would still have been certain events militarily, only such as the Gulf of Tonkin. Mm -hmm. you know, that would still have happened. Yeah. Uh, because, the, you know, because of, A, what actually happened in the Gulf of Tonkin, and B, what the Joint Chiefs wanted the president to think was happening in the Gulf of Tonkin. But that would have happened on Kennedy's watch. But Kennedy, as opposed to Johnson, would have been deeply suspicious that he was getting the real information, whereas Johnson basically said, fine, uh, that's all we need. Now we're, we're going in. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting about Johnson that he's so stubborn as a man, but then he, whenever it's military action or whenever it's sort of flexing America's muscle, he's like, okay, let's do it. And he just and he accepts it. I find, I find that funny as is in real life, you know, in our timeline, Johnson. And, 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 you know, the fact that Johnson was going to acquiesce on Vietnam is not an insignificant motive for the death of JFK. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly, that's certainly what I was thinking during the, the whole reading of the book. Um, uh, speaking of butterfly effects, I thought, I know you, you wouldn't have focused on this in the book, but just by not having Vietnam occur for America, at least not have, you know, 60,000 Americans die, that certainly would have been a massive change to yes. America's, like, you know, the, those are artists, writers, uh, politicians, all, you know, who, who died in our timeline. I, I kind of am imagining the different sort of things that would have happened if Vietnam didn't actually occur. I've well, I, I think you, you've raised a great point. I mean, it's the thing whenever, you know, out of the Holocaust, all those great minds that never mm -hmm. were able to do what they would do. And out of Vietnam, 60,000 young men who, who didn't get to contribute. Um, and, and, and I think that that's always true. That is, by the way, why I sort of felt like um, uh, there's the, the the, the majority, the vast, vast majority of the story is literally about JFK's uh, battle uh, post-Dallas over mm -hmm. the, the next few years. Um, although I do sort of speculate in, a, in the final chapter on a lot of things that might have happened, and I tried to speculate in a responsible way that takes into account uh, that you know some things would have been better and some things would have been worse, um, but certainly Vietnam would have not been the volcanic problem it was in our 1960s. Um, so what we would have had instead of the, the political turmoil of Vietnam in the 60s, we would have had the political turmoil of the Kennedy administration imploding. Mm -hmm. And of, of civil rights and of... Yes. All, so that a lot of people, um, and you, you talked about this earlier, a lot of people do think that if Kennedy didn't die, it would have been all sunshine and rainbows, and that certainly was not the case of the 60s. It was going to be explosive no matter what. And Vietnam probably overshadowed a lot of the more the other explosive things happening on at the same time. You know what, how I would look at it, and I think you're totally right, Cody, um, Vietnam was the match that lit the gasoline, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it was a fire accelerant, if you will. And so it... It brought things to the forefront in the 60s that that were gestating, but suddenly it supercharged everything. Uh, the the, the counter-response uh, to Vietnam was as strong as you know the response to Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, if you take Vietnam out of it, uh, there still is going to be a youth culture that's uh, 
alienated, but not as much as by Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're, you're not going to have anti, the anti-war movement, but you're still going to have certain basic things going on. They're just going on a little differently. They're going on at a different speed. Um, and you have, you probably subtract some of the anger out of the, uh, out of the equation. Yeah, and I, I focused on that in my scenario, too. Um, I thought that was a pretty cool parallel between our two stories. Um, and not only counterculture, but I'm sort of thinking, how would that have changed the people's relationship with the government? And, oh. and yeah, so in Vietnam, definitely it was the match, but it also showed that the government was not always truthful about what they're talking about. And so do you think that Kennedy's scandal would have sort of been a little bit of a replacement to Vietnam? I think in some respects it would have. I, 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 um, I, I think that's very true that uh, the, the, the scandal of uh, – the I guess I would call it the what, – what happens in uh, Surrounded by Enemies is more of a constitutional crisis dealing with Kennedy. And, and, yeah. and, and let's go back to the core of your question, which is um, – would we have still been an optimistic country? Would we would would we have not trusted the government? And the core of the question is: In Vietnam, we came to learn the government lied, and we didn't trust them. And mm -hmm. it was the beginning of the end where Nixon put the final nail in. Mm -hmm. Now you switch that around and surrounded by enemies, uh, and instead, what you have is. Kennedy's constitutional crisis, which I think would have caused some people to be disaffected if they thought that there were powerful forces out there uh, that were trying to change the leadership of the United States at the point of a gun, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 that was being widely discussed as opposed to you know we marginalized conspiracy theorists in our timeline, yeah, uh, but but in one where it's actually being invested and in the Kennedys actually believe in it, then it's not going to be marginalized, and so you're still going to undermine. Uh, belief in in the power structure of the world a little bit mm. so i think you still have a match but it's a very different match yeah and and um the people in this alternate scenario are very much more accepting of conspiracies and we did we do marginalize conspiracy theorists we kind of like oh that's that's hokey and, and stuff but in this it's a national debate yeah. about were there people that were trying to kill kennedy and a lot of a most a majority of people do accept it, and that's well, the. Well, they do now in our own time frame. Oh, exactly. You know, yeah. Honestly, I thought that was the the fun for me of writing it was to say, okay, in our timeline we kind of swept things under the rug and we marginalized things. Yeah. But in a timeline where. You know, and Bobby Kennedy never expressed his opinion about anything in our timeline, even though he had grave suspicions. But what what would happen if the way the events kind of laid themselves down, it led to more of a national dialogue about what happened in Dallas and mm -hmm. what it meant? I mean, wow. Uh, that to me would have been, that makes 1964 one of the most radical years in history, if, if, if that had come to pass. And I like to think that the book does a fairly credible job of laying out a scenario where it could have gone down that way. It'd be the most fun to write. Yeah. Um, speaking of the, the man himself, so to say, uh, Kennedy, I when, I when I think of Kennedy, I think the reason he was so significant was not only because he was a fairly influential leader, he was very charismatic and good-looking and um, he was very smart, but also because he was sort of the embodiment of America's future, so to say. Right. And I, I said this in my video. Um, and then when he died, it sort of it sort of killed that dream, but it also made him a martyr. And what I find, what I'm wondering is, do you think that his fall to grace, basically? would have been more devastating to the nation than if he had just died. Well, that is partly the premise of this thing. I mean, the thing is, I'm old enough to remember John Kennedy's death mm -hmm. and how it played in this country and, and how important it was. So it would be hard to say that anything could be as cataclysmic as the shock and awe 
that came from the death of Kennedy in Dallas. So I don't think anybody could ever quite equal that uh, other than a 9-11 kind of event. Yeah. Uh, I never thought anything would equal Kennedy until 9-11, and then I realized that it, I guess in some ways it overshadows it, but they're both, they're both pow moments in history. Um, but, but so Kennedy meant so very, very much to us, uh, and losing him so quickly was a shock that, that, that almost can't even be described. It's just a shock to the system. Now, had Kennedy survived, but then found himself and the country being dragged into a constitutional crisis over what happened in Dallas, that would have been more of a slow burn uh, and, and could easily have had, had a similar kind of impact. Um, Nixon had that kind of impact with Watergate. Mm -hmm. I mean, those of us who lived through Watergate uh, will never forget that either. So, but it was different. It was it was different than Kennedy's death, uh, but it was equally powerful. And I think uh, surrounded by enemies, in some respects, takes the emotion of Kennedy's death and the uh, power of the Watergate story and scandal, and kind of puts them in an atom collider and, and sort of sees that through the eyes of the Kennedy administration. Yeah. Um, thinking, <laughs> I have to think through m more, um, hmm, I don't know, I, I think probably what I would want to comment is just that it is surprising the similarities between our scenarios, even though, I mean, we, we never really knew of each other's scenarios until, you know, up until... Uh, a, a little bit ago, but it's it's strange that two different people can have pretty much the sort of same idea in studying history and saying this is like this would have been, you know, pretty an accurate representation of what could have happened. Well, I think that well, you're right. Um, it, you know, the, the the truth of the matter is, uh, if you spend time and actually think about uh, Kennedy and uh, how his removal uh, created the handoff to Johnson and then sort of subtract that out. It's pretty easy to sort of see on those two issues that uh, we've discussed here, civil rights and Vietnam, you sort of see there's got to be an impact from that. Because mm -hmm. obviously Kennedy and Johnson uh, didn't see eye to eye on Vietnam at all. Mm -hmm. And on civil rights, while they saw eye to eye and what Johnson achieved was largely Kennedy's agenda, uh, neither man would have been able to do it on their own without the martyrdom of Dallas. So uh, I, I think we're on the right side of alternate. You know, people say we're on the right side of history. Well, Cody, I think you and I are on the right side of alternate history. <laughs> exactly. I, I love that phrasing. <laughs> um, actually, now I'm thinking about different scenarios that have also happened. Um, I remember some people thought about if Kennedy had survived, then our space program would have brought us into, like, you know, space stations of by Mars and, and stuff. And um, I'm, I'm glad. I, I think that's doubtful. Uh, oh, I know, I know. I, I, I was, I was interesting about studying up on Kennedy is even though he made that masterful speech calling for us to go to the moon, he was pretty much freaking out about how much it was going to cost. Oh, oh, oh I know. And exactly. What I was... To deal with. I'm sorry. What, what I was trying to say was that um, a lot of people don't sort of analyze history and stuff, and they don't and they don't really think about what Kennedy was thinking at the time, like you said, how, how much it would cost. And so they just sort of think that the space program, and if he actually had survived, it would have sort of continued on. But that that's not always true. And so that is, you know, what you're talking about, the right side of alternate history. Well, it does. Stuff. You know, I, I certainly uh, uh, take a position on Kennedy and the space program and kind of an alternate view. Um, and But, but I, I do personally think the reason we're not on Mars right now <clears throat> is less to do with John Kennedy than, than uh, the, the decisions made by the Nixon administration going into uh, Ford and Carter. These are the guys that, that sort of let NASA start to wither on the vine in terms of uh, manned exploration. 
Uh, Kennedy Very true. loved the idea of manned exploration. He just was shocked later how much it was going to undermine his own agenda. Um, but again, uh, if you don't go to Vietnam, you've got more money, don't you? Exactly. And and you have the change to the uh, the presidential to the presidents. You basically accept. Um, I mean, it certainly would have. Well, I'm thinking back on the the actual scenario and. Do you, do you think that in your novel we would have actually had a better space program had using the scenario that you laid out do you actually think we would have had a, a better space program no I, I think uh, the, the space program was was cooked uh, you know into the DNA of the budget sufficiently that it would have gone forward I do allow Kennedy's survival to give me some really fun stuff in the in the middle of the book, mm -hmm. but ultimately we kind of ping back to uh, you know, man was going to end up on the moon, as John Kennedy stated by the end of the decade Yeah, and, and they, they, they still do, because I, I really don't think that was something that would have fallen off the charts that was too much about the Cold War and, and too much about um, uh, you know, just sort of making uh, a stand for the United States so I think it would have gone forward um, I don't think uh, Kennedy would have done better, if anything, um, because he called for the moon landing and then became martyred in our timeline. It probably gave us a more intense space program. Kennedy, had he survived, and, and whoever came after him would have, been, would have, of course, had to really fight to get every dollar in the budget for the space program because Congress would also have been freaking out about how much it cost. And, and speaking of, um, you mentioned the Cold War, um, Kennedy's uh, relationship with the Soviet Union actually kind of changed because of his uh, events in Dallas. And um, particularly, do you mind if I, I talk about Khrushchev? Sure. And you, you don't have Khrushchev be deposed in this. Instead, it, it becomes a failed attempt. Um, and so if you do you think that uh, it could have like had... Khrushchev and Kennedy sort of continued on their path. Do you think they they would have improved relationships between the U.S. and the Soviets? Well, um, I do kind of get into that in the book because uh, you know the truth of the matter is um, I think Kennedy and Khrushchev uh, would wanted to continue to work together. That was certainly the plan on November twenty first. Uh -huh. uh, on no November twenty third, had he survived, I think they would have still felt that way. But I think that they both would have been facing a very at least thinking they were facing very large forces that threatened them in their own countries. And while uh, Kennedy was able to survive Dallas, he still ended up mired in his own political issues in my novel. And I think Khrushchev would have taken Kennedy's close call and, and taken his own security a little more seriously. But ultimately, um, you know, both men would not have been able to uh, move the Cold War detente agenda uh, forward very much, uh, given their own political troubles. So I think it's a wash, probably. It's just interesting to see that, you know, I, it's just another one of those moments where I tried to give the reader uh, a, another way to look at uh, the Cold War uh, and the U.S.-Soviet uh, relationship. And, and I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of wrapping this up uh it is it's really interesting with alternate history thinking about it could have it could have happened this all could have easily happened um whoever shot kennedy could have missed and he could have shot somebody else or the set you know and kennedy and had you know other forces tried to take kennedy out it could have it could have easily went down to him being assassinated, but just by changing, you know, the projection of a bullet, you you change all of these events that would have happened in our timeline if if Kennedy died, and so that's what I like so much about this book is it it makes Kennedy sort of a part of what should have been his own death. And I, it's that concept in itself is so interesting to me, and that's why that's the the driving force of this book is that he's pretty much investigating his own death. Yeah, it's uh, it turns Jack and Bobby into 
uh, sleuths as they try to find out who was behind it, which is, is fascinating. You know, it's interesting, just to pick up and conclude here, you were talking about, it's interesting how the, just that one bullet and how it went one way instead of another. Uh, that is exactly uh, why Diversion Books uh, it ha is publishing Surrounded by Enemies. Uh, it's part of a, f of a new imprint called Breakpoint, and each one will be an alternate history uh, scenario uh, told as surrounded by enemies just was and and one of the things I, I hope to do with them is to provide those break points where they're kind of uh, we've seen if the South won the Civil War and we've seen if uh, the Nazis won World War II I don't want to do those I want to give you John Kennedy living and for example the follow-up book uh, in the breakpoint series that comes out in 2016 is called once there was a way together so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to give, I'm trying to look at history through those, those really important uh, cultural touchstones to uh, Americans who are still alive. That's really interesting. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to be doing that, uh, that series. That's, wow. Uh, I would really look forward to <laughs> reading more of this. So. I, I hope that you do, and, 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 I, and I hope that uh, when the next one comes out, we'll do another round of this. It's been really fun, and, and uh, I, again, I just wanted to, to say uh, for all your, uh, the people who drop by your YouTube channel and support it, uh, what a fantastic job you've done with the, the channel, and I think you've raised so many great issues over time. Uh, I've always enjoyed uh, spending my time um, listening to what you had to say, and, and I think that uh, the fact that you uh, have, have touched a nerve uh, obviously shows how powerful alternate history can be. And I guess that's why I'm swimming in the same stream now. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, and I guess I've been doing it for a while. Uh, I, the Dark Sky series I did for NBC in the 90s was basically an alternate history of the 1960s interpreted through the, uh, the POV of a UFO uh, uh, alien invasion. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love this stuff, and I love what you do, and uh, you should just keep it up. Thank you, and I, I love your work, and I, I haven't enjoyed a book as much as I did in a while, so thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome, and thank you very much, and I hope uh, uh, if any of your people uh, are, you know, see this or listen to this, uh, or, or you can include it, but the book is out. It's uh, no longer on pre-order. People can get a hold of it through the usual suspects, and um, I always look forward to their thoughts and comments. Okay, well, this has been an interview with Bryce Zabel. Bryce, thanks you for stopping by, and uh, for all of you, definitely check out his book. It is an amazing read. I highly recommend it, and like us on Facebook. Subscribe if you have not done so. This is Cody from the Alternate History Hub.